Okay, so we've met key terms before, like a linear sequence. And a linear sequence is one when you can have the same common difference between both. So an example of a linear sequence would be, say, 2, uh, 5, 8, 11. And you can see here that the common difference, or the CD, is plus 3 each time. And we've looked at that before. That's what we call a linear sequence. Another way we can phrase this is we can say the first difference is always the same. It's always going to be plus 3. But what happens if a sequence is not like this? Here I'm given the sequence 2, 5, 10, 17. So I'm going to look first of all at the common difference here. So the common difference between 2 and 5 is plus 3. Between 5 and 10 is plus 5. And between 10 and 17 is plus 7. So immediately I can say, well, this is not a linear sequence. Well, what type is it? The first difference between all of the two is not the same. Well, what about if we look at the second difference? What is the difference between 3 and 5? The answer is 2, or plus 2. What is the difference between 5 and 7? The answer is plus 2. So... This is what we refer to as a quadratic sequence. A quadratic sequence is when you have the same second difference. So what if I wanted to find the next sequence, or sorry, the next number in this sequence? Well, I know that the difference from seven to the next number has to be plus two. And seven plus two would give me nine. Okay, so here we have 17, sorry, here we have 17 plus 9, give me the next number in the sequence, which is going to be 28. So 17 plus 9 gives me 28, and the common difference in the second difference is the same, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So if I wanted to see what would come next, let's make this a little bit smaller and move it up. Well, this is a plus 9 I have here. I know that the difference between this and the next one has to be plus 2, which would be 9 plus 2, which would be 11. And that means that the difference is 28, so the next number is plus 11, and that would give me 39. Okay, so using the second difference, I've now found the next two terms in this sequence. As I said, the common difference is not the same, the first difference is not the same, however, the second difference is the same, and that's what we refer to as a quadratic sequence. The word constant just means the same. Okay, I'm going to do another example here for you. So we've got 6, 1, 0, 3, 10. Now they're being very nice to us. They're saying find the second difference for each of the quadratic sequences. So they've already told you it's a quadratic. So let's see what the first difference is. Well, 6 to 5 is going to be minus 5. And from 1 to 0 is minus 1. And from 0 to 3 is plus 3. And from 3 to 10 is plus 7. So that's the difference in the first one. And obviously, we can see none of them are the same. They've told us it's a quadratic, which means that the second difference must be the same. So let's have a look at that. The difference between minus 5 and minus 1 is 4. The difference between minus 1 and 3 is 4. And the difference between 3 and 7 is 4. If I was asked to find the next number in this sequence, I'm going to say, well, it's going to be 4 here. So it would be 7 plus 4 will give me what? Which is plus 11. And that will mean that 10 plus 11 will give me my next number, which is 21. So that's how we find the next term in a quadratic sequence. You're constantly looking to get the same constant in the second difference. All right, so we've had linear, we've had quadratic. There is another pattern that emerges here as well. And this is called the exponential pattern. So we'll have a look at it. I've got the numbers 4, 8, 16, and 32. 
Now, patterns that involve doubling or tripling or quadrupling or anything like that are called exponential patterns. So let's have a look. What is the first difference here? Well, the first difference here is 4. The second difference here is 8. The third difference here is 16. And what you can see here is you can actually see that this is constantly doubling. Times 2, times 2. So obviously the next one will be times 2 and I'd be adding on 32 to this one here, which would give me my next term to be 64. So an exponential one is one that when it is tripling, doubling, quadrupling, if you can notice a multiplication in the second difference. So I have an example here. For each of the sequence, identify the type of sequence and find the next three terms. So we've learned three types of sequences. The first is linear, if the common difference is the same from the very start. The second one was a quadratic, and this is when the second difference is the same. And the third one is exponential, which involves doubling, tripling, quadrupling, anywhere you can see at times. Okay, so we're going to look at these sequences and decide which ones they are. So the first one is 5, 11, 17, and 23. And the difference between the first one is going to be 6. Between 11 and 17 is going to be 6. And between 17 and 23 is going to be 6. So this is actually a linear sequence because the common difference between each of them is the same. So then it says to find the next three terms. So we're going to add on 6. That will give me 29. Add on the next 6. That will give me 35. And the last number in that sequence, we're going to add on another 6. And it will be 41. So that was part 1 there. We had to look and see which one of the sequences was it and to apply the rule to continue on to find the next three terms. Let's have a look at the second one, so number two, and it is 9, 27, 81 and 243. So again let's look at the first difference and the difference between 27 and 9 is 18, so it goes up by 18. Then the difference between 27 and 81 is 54. And the next one is the difference between 81 and 243 is 162, so plus 162. And I guess what we're asking now is, well, which type is it? Um, can we see that the second difference is going to be the same? Well, the second difference between 18 and 54 is not going to be the same as 54 and 62. I think we can all rule out straight away it's not a linear because the common difference isn't the same. So I'm gearing more towards the exponential, which is the times one. So let's see if this works. 18 times what will give you 54? Well, I think if you multiply 18 by 3, you will get 54. And let's check and see if you multiply 54 by 3, what will you get? And you do in fact get 162. So we figured out that this is indeed an exponential pattern and we now need to find the next one. So obviously it will be 162 multiplied by three. I'll do that on my calculator. It gives me 488. So plus 488 will be the difference between 243 and this. So plus 243. And so my next number up here in the sequence is going to be 729. And I obviously know that this 488 then becomes times 3 to get the next number you add on. So 488 multiplied by 3 is 1,464. We're running out of room. 1,464. And so we know then, obviously, that the difference between... 729 and the next number is 1464 so we're going to add them together and the next number in my sequence is 2197 so it asked me to find the next three terms so I'll find the first one 
the second one and I still need to find the third. I need a little bit more room for myself. And so I know that whatever this number here, it's going to be times three. Well, that's what I figured out my second difference is. So one, four, six, four, multiply by three will give me 4,392. And that's the difference between two, nine, sorry, 2197 and the next one, which if I add them together, will give me 7,000. 309. So 7309 is the last number in that sequence. 7309. Okay, so you can see with an exponential sequence they actually get big really quickly, much bigger than they do with a quadratic or with a linear. So you should spot that as well. If they're changing dramatically, if they're getting really big really quickly or really small really quickly, the chances are that they are using the exponential pattern. All right, so your learning check for this evening then. Identify the following sequences, or sorry, if the following sequences are number one, quadratic, or number two, exponential. And give the next three terms in the sequence. Show your workings. And by show your workings, I mean show how you've added on the common difference, found the second difference, all of that. And I'll see everybody tomorrow.